Uh, okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the parallel session three on this uh, afternoon on the 2021 IRSA and with very interesting topic on the early childhood development on long-term outcomes uh, that will present by three uh, presenters. Uh, I think so. they are all have uh, interesting papers. First, uh, by Made from Unai, my college. I think she is already here. And the second from Ma Anggun from UI. And the last but not least will present by Ma Astrid from the government of Tangerang City. And I believe the presentation will not only justify by the rigorous scientific method, but also tautened by empathy since I assume all of the presenter uh, are mothers, maybe except Masrus An. And, but I think we will have a uh, very insightful presentation today. Uh, without further ado, uh, first sessions I will hand to Mbak Made. Mbak uh, Made, are you here? Mbak Made Sukartini, are you here? Okay. Uh, I mean, I think I think Ibu Made not 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 in the room yet, right? Uh, let me check, sir. Okay. Uh, if not, maybe we can uh, move on into the second presenter. I think. Uh, but. Mbak Anggun, are you here, Mbak Anggun? Because I cannot see all of the participants. Wait, I will change. Okay, Mbak Ma, Ma Anggun already here, and also Mbak Astrid also here. Uh, maybe we can we we can uh, shift Mbak Madi into into the, the the last ones because uh, now we already have. Uh, Mbak Anggun here. Uh, 15 minutes, your, your time, Mbak Anggun, please. And, okay, we can still, you are still uh, not audi audible. Mbak Anggun? We can hear your audio, Ma. We cannot hear your audio. Okay, maybe Ma Anggun still have troubles with her speakers. Okay, uh, Mbak Anggun and also other participants, there's announcements that just uh, conveyed to me by Anning that your time will be 20 minutes. We will be reduced uh, the time for only 20 minutes for uh, one, one, one paper, 20 minutes. So we will cut the time. Uh, since Ma Anggun still having problem with her audio. Maybe we can move to the third one. Ma Astrid, can you hear me? Okay. Okay, you are uh, clear and loud. Ma Astrid, yes. uh, 10 minutes. I, I have to cut the time. 10 minutes. Oh my God. Okay, I will try to do it fast. The time uh, is yes. not Wait a minute, where is it? Ah, this is. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today, my name is Astrid and today I will try to present uh, our paper 
entitled Do Remittances and Social Assistance Effect Health and Educational Outcomes? A study on Indonesian children. Uh, the background is, uh, in the last decade, Indonesian has seen an abundance of uh, remittance flow and a significant improvement in social assistance program. Uh, among other problem occurs is malnutrition and low, uh, low educational attendance, which require attention uh, since its impact is significant on the future generation. Uh, in this paper, malnutrition consists of undernourishment and overnutrition. Despite the number is uh, being declined, uh, Ministry of Health reported that the children are still experiencing severe short stature, severe underweight. Uh, on the other hand, prevalence of uh, overweight children is also occur. Yes, sorry. Uh, on education, uh, educational attendance, uh, school participation shows a positive trend, uh, but not satisfactory enough for the uh, secondary education. One policy implemented for the educational sectors is by the distribution of cash assistance. On the other hand, households with members uh, underwent migration process admit that uh, they're having their economic constraint loosened through supplementary income. Uh, this article intends to investigate the effect of both remittances and social assistance on two outcomes. The first is on children's malnutrition. The second is on educational attendance. Why Indonesia? Since Indonesia uh, experienced migration and remittances. And the second is uh, Indonesia has a growing social uh, assistance program, uh, despite that their share is only uh, less than 1% of GDP. Uh, remove further on the literature review, most of literature, liter literature review uh, finds uh, this transfer on separate strands, uh, which reveal that public and private transfer are effective in improving nutritional status, reducing the probability of low and standard children, increasing access to healthcare, as well as school attendance. Only two literature addressing both transfers on health and educational outcomes. The first is from Murugara, which found that social assistance uh, have a larger impact on healthcare utilization. The second is McDade, with, which found that both remittances and cash assistance affect positively by increasing school enrollment and school attendance. Uh, migration in Indonesia has, uh, has been a longstanding feature since uh, Dutch colonialism. One, about one in eight Indonesian population live in different province from their birthplace. The main motivation is driven by family reason, work or education related. By comparison, international labor migration is very low, only accounting for 3.7 million. Most of them are low skilled and employed informally as domestic helpers and caregivers and most of them heading to the Middle East and Southeast Asian countries. For social assistance, uh, Indonesian social assistance was initiated when the economic crisis hit in 1997. Uh, in 2005, the government of Indonesia implemented the Rise for the Poor or Rise Skin. In the same time, uh, the government also initiated a UCT or un unconditional cash transfer entitled the Bantuan Langsung Tonight or the BLT. In 2013, the BLSM replaced the BLT. In 2007, the CCT uh, called Program Keluarga Harapan was launched. The other is uh, the education related assistance is BSM and Bidik Misi. The method we use here is a uh, probit method. Uh, we use the 2014 Indonesian Family Life Survey data. Uh, the transfer uh, is from uh, remittance and social assistance. Remittance, since uh, IFLS is uh, not intended as a migration survey and therefore does not inquire 
uh, the question which strongly related to remittance recipient. We use a proxy of interfamily transfer sent by parents, children, or spouse that live at least in different kabupaten kota or from the from abroad. For social assistance, we use uh, BLSM, Raskin, BSM, Bidik Misi, and PKH. Uh, following the research conducted by Bucelli, Bohara, Fontanela, Fontanela, and also Rosso Sudarmo et al., we use probit method on the following models. We have two sets of equation. Uh, the one is uh, for the children's nutritional status and the other is for the educational status. Each set of equation consists of relatively the same sets of variables. They are health and educational status as the dependent variables. Uh, and for independent variables are the health, uh, the children, parents, and household characteristics, also the transfer status. Next, the result and discussion find that, um, okay. Uh, household expenditure and transfer are important in determining nutritional status of Indonesian children. Uh, children from uh, remittance receiving household are less likely to have severe underweight and severely so short stature. Uh, on the other hand, children from social assistance receiving household are more likely to have severe underweight. It should be interpreted that the household are very poor so that children suffer from underweight, therefore they are eligible to receive social assistance. Uh, from the parents' characteristics, we find that thin children tend to have thin parents and vice versa. Uh, following Prihatini, Jahari, and Rumbling and Koim, this study, this study used the consumption of uh, meat, egg, fish, or dairy products as indicator of nutritious, nutritious food intake. The results find that the children consume nutritious, nutritious meal at least three times a week is less likely to suffer from overweight. Unfortunately, IFLS does not provide data on physical activities. Uh, this is usually proxied with television ownership. However, we find that the representation is no longer relevant and therefore we use uh, the ownership of cellular phones to proxy this info. Uh, children with higher physical activities is less likely to suffer from overweight. Uh, the last is uh, children living in urban area also negatively correlated to the probability of being undernourished. This may be caused by better access to infrastructure, transportation, and a lack of open space for physical activities. Turning to the last result, the study found that children who come from remittance recipient, recipient household have lower school attendance uh, than the non-recipient, of course. It is presumed that uh, this is due to lack of parental supervision uh, due, the, due to the migration process or to the possibility they, that they are tempted to join the labor force uh, the migration forces themselves. And then uh, this is uh, similar to the finding of Davis and Brazil and also the McKenzie and Rappaport. Further, uh, from the statistically insignificant result in social assistance, we found that uh, the study finds no evidence that social assistance imposes an effect on school attendance. This may mean that uh, the social assistance received is too small, the duration is too short, or not regularly distributed. This finding is cons consistent with Bazi and Li and Huang. OK. 
okay is sorry sorry mm. however low school uh, lower school attendance was also found in children from the age group 16 to 18 years old uh, this finding is consistent with acosta which reported lower school attendance and uh, febriani and surya hadi which reported that difficulty in accessing secondary school in remote areas can uh, uh, you can reflect this uh, kind of situation. Uh, the parents' characteristics show that both father and mother influence children's school attendance. Uh, this support may only uh, may not only come from parents' role but also financially. Finally, uh, similar to the previous topic, this study finds that the household living in urban areas ex uh, experience better opportunities for satisfactory school attendance. This finding uh, emphasized that the poverty alleviation program needs to cover both sides, the supply and demand side. Uh, the government needs to provide educate infrastructure as well as uh, comprehensive social assistance uh, in poverty alleviation program. Next, the conclusion. Uh, based on the data, we find that social assistance received demonstrate to have very limited effect uh, compared to uh, remittance received, which show uh, having more substantial results. Uh, the reason may be because that the social assistance received is too small, not regularly distributed, and the duration is too short. Next, parents have essential contribution in determining children's nutritional status and educational outcome. And infrastructure readiness is important. Since uh, city offer better utilities, which might contribute to a better educational and health outcomes. For a policy recommendation, the study used national social assistance program, which shares remain less than 1% of GDP. Government participation, uh, especially uh, local government, since this is uh, these are their share, uh, their affair, is needed to enhance the social assistance program, such as updating the unified database or BDT, allocating more social assistance for health and educational educational sector, and the third, it provide more school and health facility. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Ma Astrid, for your great presentations. And I was mistaken uh, by uh, about about the time for presentation, but I think now we have more time for uh, discussions. Uh, please feel free to ask uh, Ma Astrid questions, and I think we have Mas Rusan also here. Maybe we can contribute on the discussions. Yeah, first question came from. Uh, I think of Okay, please uh, feel free to uh, ask questions, Sidik. Sidik. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate Masrit. Uh, it was a really nice presentation, and um, uh, I want to I want to uh, know more uh, about how uh, how did you track remittance using IFLS data? Uh, that's my questions. Thank you. OK. Uh, as I previously stated that it's uh, the IFLS is not equipped with uh, the question for, for the remittance. So therefore, I proxy, uh, we proxy them with a uh, transfer from uh, inter family household transfer from a uh, different kabupaten kota uh, different province or from different uh, countries thank you so you 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 uh, you did you track the migration history like you know from from their, their family uh i did but it's not that uh it's not working so i just use uh, the interfamily transfer i've all uh, i've already asked the run corporation with no result 
Okay. Well, um, I have a suggestion. Actually, uh, uh, it will, when you use IFLS uh, in the migration section, actually you can track each individual uh, from the day they were born until the last wave of the survey, which is 2014. You can track uh, yearly uh, their positions. Whenever they change the, uh, let's say, move to another province or another districts, or even move to another sub districts, you can, you know, uh, make or 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 uh, mark them as a movement or a migrations, and then you can match that with the, uh, the family transfer uh, in order to proxy the the remittance. I think that's uh, my suggestions that I can think of. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, that also what happened with UNDP research before. I think it's in 2012, but it you uh, they use uh, longitudinal data. Uh, I only use uh, cross-sectional data from 2014, so uh, I don't think I can do that. No, actually, um, you can actually. Uh, huh? Yes. Because I, because I, I in my paper I also use IFLS five, and I can track, you know, the migration history. You don't well, of course, you can use uh, the previous IFLS two thousand seven and two thousand, and even you can use uh, IFLS uh, the first one nineteen ninety three, uh, but that uh, you're not gonna use them. You're just gonna use some informations uh, from the previous IFLS. Uh, Whenever you find the migration history that uh, the, when when the value is missing, so when it's missing and then it's unclear, you can track them back to previous IFLS and then uh, you can match that to the uh, current IFLS. Okay. Okay. I think I think we have to yeah. uh, ask you for further uh, assistance, maybe. Okay. Just contact me. Thank okay, you. Okay. Thank much. you, Mas Mas Sidik. Next uh, questions maybe for the other participants and later maybe uh, we can continue discussions with Masidik and I assume Masidik is very, very uh, advanced in utilizing the IFLS data. Thank you. Any other, please, we still have time to uh, ask Astrid. I'm sorry that I... Uh, Wayan, may I ask questions? Okay, Mbak Made, please, Mbak Made. Mm -mm. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, it's really uh, excellent research. Uh, it's nice to hear that uh, remittance has no significant impact on children's health and education. Uh, uh, can we uh, conclude that uh, recently uh, remittance just has a good contribution for the current spending for the household? But uh, we have to sacrifice uh, the the future uh, of our children. So, how should government prepare for this uh, finding? Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Bu Sukartini. Unfortunately, that our research is not covering this. Uh, but my other paper maybe uh, can. Uh, answer the question since uh, I have another paper uh, based uh, using the FLS and using the remittance and social assistance data, but on household expenditure. But I don't think I, don't think I can discuss it here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pak Wayan. Okay, uh, Any other questions? Uh, we still have uh, round. 10 minutes for the discussions. Uh, please uh, uh, interrupt me, Anin, if, if I uh, overuse the time for this session. Okay, Apsari. Uh, Ap Apsari, you could ask questions to Bu Astrid, please. Time is yours. Hi, uh, can you can you hear my voice? Clear, clear. How do you? Thanks. Uh, sorry, I, I came I came kind of late, but uh, so I might miss this. Um, I might miss this info information, but I would like to ask: Why would you choose profit to estimate the the remittance effect on health and or education? I mean, 
uh, when I see your table, uh, I can see that there are underweight, overweight, uh, being healthy and, and, and whatnot, and how it affects their education. But why probit? Because uh, as far as I know, probit can only taking as much as two values. So uh, that, that still kind of bothers me, <laughs> but uh, maybe I missed something in, in your presentation. Thank you, uh, Bu Astrid. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, this is because uh, the the table. Can I show the table? Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. This one, I oh no no no. This one, I think. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Yes. Sorry. This one. Uh, this is uh, the problem method is uh, just basically just uh, uh, find that are there several underweight or not, several over uh, short stature or not. So this is. Uh, uh, run uh, differently. I mean, uh, separately. Uh, run separately. So uh, from this separate uh, regression, I just uh, uh, compare it in this uh, tables. So uh, I I'm fo I was following the uh, the findings from Pak Budi Reso Sudarmo in 2010. Uh, he used this kind of method to see whether migrants uh, are have better uh, uh, better performance in their uh, uh, destination uh, area. So I use it to uh, to perform this kind of this uh, paper. That's it. Okay. This is this is not a probit result, right? This is probit. This is a probit result, and this one is the marginal effect, right? Yeah. Not okay. 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 Uh, maybe the uh, question from uh, Absari uh, will be the last question for uh, Bu Astrid. Congratulations once again for what done, Bu Astrid. And then, big uh, applause uh, to you. And then uh, we can move to the uh, next presenter and. Uh, I think we have... How can I stop sharing, <laughs> please? Uh, maybe, uh, Aning, could you help me? Aning, please help. Okay, next presenter will be uh, Anggun. Okay, eh, Mbak Anggun, are you? Okay, okay. okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Okay, is it audible? Yeah, you're, you're audible. Oh, okay. 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 You have 20 minutes, Anggun, and okay. uh, Anggun. Uh, uh, please. Uh, oh, yeah, wait, wait. I share my screen. Can you see the screen? Uh, in progress. Okay. I can see. Slides. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you for today's opportunity. I'm Anggun Nurjana. I will present my study. The title is Early Childhood Education of Village Leaders and Governance and Empirical Evidence from Indonesia. First, I will address our uh, outline today. First is introduction and motivation, how I got an idea to this study. And the second is research question, gap and contribution, and then conceptual framework, data and measurement, methods, result, and conclusion. Next is introduction. Firstly, uh, beginning from the giving authorities, or we call it decentralization in some, con uh, in some democratic countries uh, to the lower level of governance of village. Uh, so Indonesia as one of, the, of these countries to giving authority to their village uh, since 2014, it, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, 
where uh, it has many uh, pro and contrast from these matters. And one of them is the Blaine Lewis, where he found in his study that uh, village apparatus of Indonesia has a poor management of decentralization. So he said that giving authority without accountability, it uh, might cause some problems. And one of them is corruption. So corruption will be our main problem in my, uh, in my research. Motivation from the corruption, I like to, I would like to looking for the solution of this corruption from education. And uh, this is also supported by uh, some research. Uh, one of them is Monica Martinez Bravo in 2017. Uh, he, she, she found that educational attainment of uh, village apparatus can increasing the efficiency of governance in the village. And as we know, uh, corruption as a behavioral act is developed since childhood age education childhood education. So I will using uh, educational uh, early, in early childhood as a main program to see the Im this impact to the corruption behavior. Uh, and it's also according to Janet Curry that uh, this program for the participant in adulthood, it can increasing their educational attainment uh, and uh, income. And also the most important is reducing the crime behavior through character development. Uh, and also, it's also a support by Movid that this is uh, effective, uh, effectively can uh, increasing self-control of a person. So I wish to examine impact of early childhood education program on corruption cases in the village of Indonesia, especially corruption case of village leaders. The such question of my study is just one, it's whether a childhood education program in the 1990s changed the corruption behavior of the village head and corruption at the village level. And as for research gap, this is a first, first research that uh, explaining about how uh, relating uh, the early childhood education to corrupt behavior. So, this is, will be a one or, or the first study to, to, uh, to explain that and can, uh, can make, uh, uh, can uh, adding uh, some literature in corruption, in educa early education and, and in uh, uh, education itself. And this is my conceptual framework, the pathway. It this is a uh, apple graph, I say it's apple graph, so how this program can impact the corruption behavior? As I said in the first, in the, uh, in the slide before that there are some several, uh, some uh, results of this program. It, I, I classify into, into, uh, into groups in up, in, in the first, in the first, uh, it's a, a reducing criminal and increasing self-control. It's as a uncognitive uh, knowledge of person. And in, in the bottom of this graph is increasing, increasing educational education attainment as cognitive knowledge of person. So these two, these two uh, skills can can make a people more literate and cultivated, which is resulting in less corrupt so from this on it can relating to the corrupt behavior by uh, behavior development characteristic development habit development and inherit inherit ethnic and culture process next is this is my main uh, my main theories that i use in my test in my studies i mean uh, based on Asia, Garcia Pelosa and Jay Persley in 2009, 2009 uh, providing a result that the equilibrium strategy chosen by the party in a power depends on initial condition of educational level in a citizen. So there are three levels of education in one in, in a country. 
there are high and low. And they are high, intermediate and low. As for high and low, corruption is tend to be more corruption is less less or lower than uh, than uh, in intermediate because in high the political uh, in in a power is facing a rational voters so honestly become the power to get uh, voters as for the lowest because the the outcomes of this country is low so they focus on increasing their potential then human capital their human capital so they just focus on increasing public education and as for the intermediate level of education this is the most in interesting because uh, in this uh, kind of countries there are uh, like a gap in unequal of education so there are high uh, people with high education and people with uh, low education so this this uh, this a gap might make uh, the power of the party is is stronger and the citizen is not high enough to result in efficiently monitoring the politicians. So this is my uh, timeline, timeline of this study. Start from 1989, where the early childhood education in Indonesia is more concerned and more detailed uh, by uh, government and also there are new curriculum in 1992, which is focused on behavioral development. So in 1992, it's a starting point where a government focused on a behavioral development of children. I simulate uh, this, this uh, my uh, studies uh, to process a bike uh, cohort system, cohort system. So it's starting in 1994, where the children is participated in preschool. And, and we assume that this child will, will joining the village election in later time. And if we, uh, if we, if we calculate the eligible age of this child, it will be in 2013. And I will using 2014 as the baseline election time to this uh, to this study, and uh, I got uh, from uh, from the data I using PODES as as main data, which is consists twenty three thousand village, and there are two two kind of village where there are the preschool in 1993 and without preschool in 1993 so there are treatment which is 13 villages 15000 villages and control village is 10000 village as for the outcome interest of course corruption might be, become my outcome interest i using supreme supreme court decision on their official website uh, where I using to 2006 until 2018. It it occur it focus on occurring in the village, and also I I try to specify specification of uh, village leaders. So we I will uh, dividing uh, this uh, corruption kind of corruption. And as for race education of village head will be a mediator of my. Uh, my approachment. As for explanatory variable of interest, uh, I using early childhood education program using ODES in 1993, which is denoted one if there is preschool and zero otherwise. And the second is election year dummy variable. So this is will be a proxy to illustrate the village leaders. Uh, there are uh, data in PODES which uh, contain tenure period of village head. So I using this equation to measuring uh, uh, where, uh, when, when, when the when the election happened. 
So I using two approaches of this study. First, I using cross section data uh, by IP mediate, and the second is panel data using a different in different days. The goal is to confirming the consistency of the result. So this is my first uh, approach man, using IV mediate, where this curriculum cannot uh, directly directly impacted the corruption cases, but with some transition. So the corrupt the curriculum of 1993 will be um, impacted the treatment, which is the, the village head who experienced preschool in 1993 and held election in 2014. As for the the mediator is education of village head and the outcome is corruption case. This is my main specification. So Z is one if the village has a childhood education. T or, or treatment is one if the village had experienced a childhood and held election in 2014. And M is mediator years educational and Y is corruption case. And this is my result of IV mediate. As you can see in direct effect, so the curriculum can reducing the corruption. So there are panel A and panel B, A for village head and B for in the village. So as for the total effect, we can see there are two mixed results. So in the village head, there are show positive friends and in the, in the village, it show negative friends. So these two mixed and contrary result might be uh, interesting in my study. As for the total effect show 2,000 to 200% is based on uh, mean dependent variable. And this is my uh, first stage of the IV uh, about the program and this program can increasing the educational attainment of the treatment and and village head and others village head which not uh, held election in 2014. And as for the 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 years of education to the to the outcome interest Y1 and Y2 is is shows consistent result uh, which is same as a uh, immediate result in total effect. Yeah, there are similar, similar, uh, uh, similar number and similar uh, positive and negative. And as for the treatment, the T, it's uh, exactly same as the total effect, the result. So next is my difference in differences. Yeah, this is my specification, the treatment and then after, and then the treatment X after. And I, so, I also uh, try to, to test the common treatment of this uh, panel data, of my panel data. So as you can see, we, we want to see uh, if there is a parallel trend before the eligible education program impacted the village. And the, the, the graph we can see the in the left is village head and the, in the right is in corruption in the village as universal. I try I also try to uh, classify these corruption cases in three groups. There are urban or rural, college, non-college village head, and young and old. And the most uh, interesting thing is that a village head with a college or continuing college is more corrupted than non-college. And as for the in rural and urban, it's uh, corruption more, more, more corrupted in urban area. So the reason of my different differences is actually has the same. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, this this uh apa, this this uh, result actually it significant. It's significant. Um, forget to. I choose the wrong uh, PPT. I'm sorry. So uh, 
actually the result is consistent with the first first uh, result and this is my robustness check to uh, the interpretation so the interpretation of my study is that the village had participated in preschool 1993 can prevent the carp behavior in the village but can control their greed so they they are has uh, ability to control their stuff their territorial but in other hand in the back back uh, in the backstage he he selfishly uh, advantages their self in addition the educational the educated village leader uh, more uh, more corrupt more corrupted uh, and we can see that this this also uh, has relation with my my uh, main theories that in uh, in intermediate countries like Indonesia there are gaps of uh, of uh, citizen gaps of educational so this might make uh, the citizen cannot control the elite so the productivity on unscaled human research of uh, high and the output is low then that then this your time two minutes this, more angun oh, okay and this condition make these countries are tend to stuck in poverty trap so the conclusion of the this uh my studies is that this uh, curriculum actually can can reducing but not powerful enough to to make it uh, reducing and the curriculum of program it also show contrast contrast a resulting first or uh, it also based on uh, based on the 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 condition of the countries and the recommendation of course recommendation of this study is we need to improving our curriculum and we need to focus or or specifically in input anti corruption in the curriculum in the matter in the story time using music a film or book or game to our uh, to our early childhood education uh, curriculum to stimulate children uh, to be uncorrupted person and also we can using traditional game as uh, anti corruption message and also is one of the introduction traditional heritage such as chongklak and uh, and the last is uh, there are a, a interesting curriculum in japan that they are focused on habitual development so habitual might be the highlight of the process in early childhood education program okay thank you for your attention uh any question okay thank you angun uh, it was such a incredible work uh, try to tracing back uh, data to uh, podes microdata seeking a, an answer for the questions uh, why corruption uh, exists and uh, whether the childhood education affected the the behavior now i will open the q and a sessions please feel free to ask a question raise your hand or just uh, open the mic and ask me so okay mas sidik please Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, nice topic and nice presentation by Anggun. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, you use PODES, right? Right. Uh, okay. Um, about the, uh, the methodology that you employ, uh, have you tried using regression discontinuity design? Oh, no. No? I, no, no. I Because, tried... um, okay. Yeah, I, I'm using... Uh, reducing um i are uh, using uh IV mediate iv and different different yeah 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 that's okay. that's 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 fine as long as it is uh um uh in line with with your identification strategy but uh my suggestions is that uh, based on your identifications and the uh, the the exposure from the uh, the government uh, policy that 
uh, intervene the uh, educational system in 1994, uh, I, I highly suggest you to try using the RDD, the, the regression discontinuity design, because a lot of uh, similar studies uh, that, you know, uh, that using the educational policy as an exposure uh, and, and in order to, to estimate the causal effects of uh, this policy, uh, popularly they are using the RDD. So, well, let's just try it. Maybe it, you got the better result or maybe uh, you will get the same results just to strengthen your uh, outcomes. That's going to be good because many papers when, you know, when uh, evaluating educational policy, uh, yeah, they always use the RDD. So just try it. And uh, that's, you know, if, if you need to uh, know more about the, uh, the regression discontinuity design, you can look the paper from uh, Guido Imbens and Thomas Lemex. Probably you, heard, you have heard it. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. Okay. Thank you for, uh, Anggun, you have any reply? Uh, thank you for the adv advice. And I will maybe try to uh, consult with my lecturer first. Yeah, we, we, we have Asrus An here. Yes. Masrus An, you have yes. an idea about, about the suggestions, Masrus An. You are a microeconomician, as I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, uh, Mas. Who I should call Mas Khalifani. Uh, I think it's a great idea. Um, uh, yeah, we might try to use the uh, what is the cohort, yeah, the years of birth as the running variable, maybe just to try. But um, my experience in implementing uh, this technique, um, it, uh, it seems to me that we, we need um, a quite a decent, um, what is uh, cohort effect at the cutoff in, okay. in which um, in which the the event of interest might not uh, provide it at the moment but let's we haven't tried it uh, I did several as well for for other topic but um, uh, for this one we just rely on um, the instrumental variable and uh, the, the ID but it's 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 good a uh, good idea thanks okay great. I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna contact you, uh, Mas Rusan. Yeah, because, sure. Uh, I also have interest in working with the uh, the government policy in education in 1994. So I think that's gonna be okay, so or, or collaboration something. <laughs> okay. Sure, no problem. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Mas Mas Sirik and Mas Rusan. Ibu Wiwin, you have any questions for Angun? Please feel free to ask questions. Uh, thank you. This is very interesting because I never uh, thinking about that uh, childhood education will be affected to corruption behavior. Uh, I just wonder what kind of early childhood education that do you mean in this research? Is it kind of type of specific educations like ethics, honesty, or nationalism, or just level or years of education? Uh, I mean, in this curriculum, you said that uh, was have more weight to behavioral aspects, or what do you think if you compare to the newest curriculum? Is that will have a same impact in the next uh, generations? Thank you. Okay, thank you for Mrs. Wiwin for the question. Uh, in my uh, studies. Uh, this uh, curriculum because I uh, I just using uh, the the availability so the availability in uh, one uh, village might can can increasing their educational attainment in the in their village and as for what the differences from this this curriculum with the others before uh, the early childhood education is uh, not specifically explained and the curriculum also is uh, uh, very period period so in in this point in 1990 1990 there are there are uh, 
policy that the curriculum is the same for the public and uh, for the private. So this will make uh, the, the, the process of uh, regression is more apple to apple. And as for uh, curriculum right now, actually it uh, develop uh, develop uh, it um it's a it's a development of this this uh this curriculum so 1993 1990s is the first uh curriculum that uh, implement behavioral uh behavioral uh habit uh, behavioral uh, hab yeah development of the characteristic of the children and focus on their their way of uh, their way of uh, thinking and their way of uh, the behave in this curriculum so as for uh, the next curriculum if i using that curriculum i can uh, calculate the impacts because it need uh, some time later to to regress that process uh maybe that uh, from me uh thank you for mr mrs we win thank okay. you thank uh, you very much yeah, thank you Bubi. mas rusan do you want to add something i think we have yeah two points for this again most of the point already mentioned by angun uh so our our uh treatment of interest relies on the uh assumption that during the PAUD uh, teaching, uh, the, the golden period time, uh, we uh, expect the character building was happening there, especially attitude toward honesty, because the, the sub uh, element of uh, uh, crime, which is corruption that we, we observe here is, is lies on this uh, dishonesty. So, by emphasizing the curriculum on the character building during this, this early childhood education, that's the, the main uh, assumption that we, we rely on in this um, uh, study. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Masus. And then the suggestions to include uh, the local uh, games like Chong Plak, it's very interesting to, to suggest to the government curriculum. Thank you and congratulations once again for Angun and Maslus and for your uh, very, very interesting research. A big applause for both of you. And we move to the last uh, presenter here. We have uh, Mamade and uh, Busiti. Uh, Mamade, uh, your time, uh, 20 minutes for presenting your presentation and then we follow with the discussion. Time is yours, Mamade. Thank you, Pak Wayan. Uh, Siti Munaro who will present the PPT. Thank you. Visiti. Good afternoon, honorable audiences. I am Siti Munawara and my team is Lima uh, Sukartini from Universitas Erlangga. Okay, I will share screen. Uh, I'm honored to be here to present about my research paper entitled like model like son, like father, like daughter, heritability of cognitive ability, some evidence from Indonesia. All right, let's get started. Parents can inherit physical genetic to their children. Uh, Thomas study in 1994. Uh, shows that parental education is positively correlated with physical genetic in the form of children hate. Mother's education has more uh, significant influence on the hate of girls than boys. On the other hand, a father education then tends to have more effect on sons than doctors. The same thing with hereditary disease such as diabetes. Parents who have a history of diabetes is also at high risk of developing diabetes, Jacob 2021. It can say that uh, each parent will inherit several things to children, especially physical form and disease. However, 
do parents also inherit academic ability to their children? Whether the intelligence of parents is cross, crossly inherited to children? So this study will review the situation and analyze the determinants of cognitive abilities in childhood and their possible consequences and on education and work outcomes after the individual mature. Figure one shows that the cognitive capacity of children in Indonesia is still relatively low. Students' abilities are still below the average uh, international standard as evidenced by the 2018 PISA results. Namely, Indonesia is ranked 73 out of 79 countries, ICD, uh, 2019. Indonesia's performance among other Asian countries in literacy, mathematics, and science is still far behind compared to China, Singapore, and Malaysia. Meanwhile, uh, cognitive ability is one of the components of increasing individual capacity and is the essential part of the development of human resources, Zara and Wisana 2019. Uh, cognitive ability is a strong predictor of increasing education and market outcomes. So that developing countries such as Indonesia are essential to improve the quality of human resource that lead the global competitiveness and in the end can improve the Indonesian economy. Theoretically, the relationship between cognitive abilities and educational attainment is based on human capital theory. Human capital can be written in the production function as follows. The production function uh, reflects a positive rela rela relationship between human capital and output. Uh, individuals, individuals who have better cognitive capacity will produce greater output and lead to better educational attainment. And the relationship between educational attainment and labor market outcomes is based on the mutual function. In this question, years of schooling represents uh, educational attainment. This question means that higher, educa higher individual educational attainment will lead to labor market outcomes, namely uh, better wages. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Based on the literature review, several factors affect cognitive abilities. Cognitive abilities are influenced by the socioeconomic background of the family, such as parents' education level, parental income, education expenditure, and several other factors, and several other variables. Burhan et al. study in 2017 uh, examines the effect of socioeconomic factors on child, children, level of cognitive ability measured by PISA result. Uh, meanwhile, Wang et al. study in 2020 used China Education Panel Survey to examine the causal effect of parental education on child educational performance. The study result uh, said that parents' educational level has a positive in influence on children's cognitive abilities. So uh, it can show well-educated parents have higher awareness of quality of life that indirectly raises the cognitive ability of their children. Other research, Dahl and Lochner, 2012, Use national longitudinal survey of youth, uh, 19, 1979, and use OLS method to estimate the causal effect of income on cognitive ability as measured by children's math scores and reading achievements. The result study is parental income has a positive and significant relationship with children's cognitive abilities. Study Kang estimates the effect of education expenditure on children's cognitive abilities in South Korea. Education costs are measured through private tutoring expense, while cognitive abilities are measured by math and language test scores. And the result study, uh, so education expenditure have a positive correlation with children's cognitive abilities. On the other hand, Mensa and Kiernan study in 2010 estimates the influence of parental psychological health of children cognitive in ch children cognitive abilities using data from the millennial, millennium cohort in the UK. Uh, 
the study the results the results study uh, shows psychological health of parents has negative relationship with children cognitive abilities it means uh, parents who experience high psychological pressure have an impact on children lower cognitive achievement other family social economic backgrounds such as family family size also affect cognitive abilities black difference and solvanes 2010 focused on analyzing the effect of family size on cognitive abilities using data from the male population of norway uh, the study result so family size have negative uh, relationship with children cognitive abilities an increase in family size can have negative impact on the quality of the child, uh, namely the child's IQ. On the other hand, Alex Sobolo study in 1997 estimate difference, uh, difference in cognitive abilities as measured by IQ between uh, urban and rural children increase. Uh, Alex Sobolo shows that children cognitive score in urban areas are higher than in rural areas. Education in rural areas is worse than in urban areas. Poor and condition makes um, school hours shorter in rural areas. It makes academic, ed, academically cap capable individu individuals also decline in rural, uh, in rural areas. Okay, and Black used a large data set on the Norwegian population to precisely measure the effect of birth order on IQ and while Helen used data from the National Longitudinal Survey of it in 1979 cohort, found that birth order has a negative and significant relationship to cognitive ability. Black et al. also argue that the eldest child gets special attention from their parents, while uh, children born af afterward have to share time with siblings born earlier. Next in the study, the research approach used is quantitative. The types and sorts of data used are secondary data, namely the Indonesian Family Life Survey, IFLS in 2000 and 2014. Uh, the research sample consists of 70 observation, and the analysis technique used is ordinary square regression and instrumental variable. And this empirical model is as follows. The first equation explains the determination of cognitive abilities. X1 is the socioeconomic background factors, uh, which consists of the parents' age, the natural algorithm of the parents' income, the parents' education, and psychological health of the parents, the natural algorithm of education expense, and the location of residence. X2 is a factor of child characteristic, namely is child age, child gender, and the border. It is uh, error term. And the second equation explains the function of the wage and function of the years of schooling. Uh, language is natural algorithm of which for 12 months, years of schooling is the length of schooling. And cognitive score is the total scores of cognitive abilities uh, of children age seven to 14 years. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Children's cognitive scores in Indonesia in 2000. In this table, shows that the cognitive scores of children aged 7 to 14 years in Indonesia are divided into several, several levels. From the several levels, it can conclude that the cognitive scores of children at the intellectually superior and intellectually defective level is only small. Meanwhile, the average cognitive score of children it is at the intellectually average level, reaching 49.29%. Uh, this is the result of estimation of cognitive ability determinant model in 2000. The estimation result shows that the natural algorithm of expenditure on education, parents' education, location of residence, and child age is significantly positively correlated with cognitive score at the 1% level. On the other hand, 
the child gender was significantly negatively correlated with cognitive score at the at the tenth percent. Do parents also inherit academic abilities to their children? Uh, whether the intelligence of parents is cross, crossly inherited to children? The estimated results uh, related to the habits are present in the following table. The estimation shows that parents inherited their intelligent genes on the, their children. Parental, in, parental education has a positive relationship with children's cognitive scores. The father's education parable was significantly positively correlated with daughter's cognitive scores at the one uh, person level. On the other hand, mothers also tend to inherit the intelligent genes on the, their sons. Mother education parable is significantly positively correlated with son's cognitive score at the 5% level. It's mean it's true that parents inherit their, their intelligence to their children. Okay. Estimation result of the effect of cognitive score on educational achievement result and the level method. The estimation result in this table shows that the cognitive score has significant positive correlation on the educational attainment. It means that an increase in children's uh, cognitive score has, has the opportunity to increase their in educational attainment. The educational attainment of children as measured by years of schooling also has a significant positive correlation with the natural logarithm of which at the chef at the five person level. In conclusion, uh, socioeconomic status in the family, including parents' education, as funds for children's education, location of president and other factor, uh, such as gender and age of the children significantly affect children's cognitive abilities. Cognitive ability also explains success in educational attainment and labor market outcomes, namely which, which is related, related to heredity of intelligence, parents with a better level of education inherit their intelligence, intelligence on the onto their children. Uh, so the suggestion in this study is that the community, uh, especially the younger generation, must prepare for better education. So that later in can impact the family socioeconomic status, which is better. Parents, society, and the Indonesian government also need to create appropriate policies to improve children's cognitive abilities. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Good afternoon. If any question, uh, we will discuss it. Thank you, Siti, for the presentation and, and the great research. And I think uh, at least now we have uh, an evidence about maybe we can we could conclude that uh, parents' education could be a good uh, IV instrument for for the education. So I think. Okay, please, uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask questions to uh, Mat City here. Okay. Mat Sidik, Mat Sidik, do you have any questions, Mat Sidik? Uh, because I saw you are very uh, advanced in econometric uh, strategy and then uh, maybe you have any 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 questions or anything that you want to discuss with uh, Mbak Siti. Please, Mbak Siti. Um, well, uh, okay. Uh, I think I only have one suggestion regarding the um, uh, birth order that you use in the individual covariates. Um, I think uh, you can uh, consider of using number of siblings because uh, I have tried to test myself uh, about the, which one is the bigger effects between the birth order or the uh, number of siblings in one household family. And uh, it turns out that um, the number of siblings have a greater effects. So I think you could also put that as a complement in your individual covariates. So that's that's my my suggestion. Okay, thank you, Pak Sidik. 
<coughs> we will consider uh, in this study we happen at uh, this variable okay we will consider later to improve our result in the future thank you but okay oh yeah uh, i have a, a question actually about the all parents educations like how did you make the all parents educations because in IFLS as far as I know it is separated between uh, father's educations and mother educations right like you know in a household if a household head is male and then there is the educational variable as well like how did you uh, uh, merge between mother and father's education as a single variable Okay, thank you. Uh, Siti, can you explain first to Pak Sidik how we generate the mother education and father education and merge the data into one uh, data set? Please, Siti. Siti. Is Siti still here? Kumade, Kumade, if oh. you remember, you, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is there is someone that uh, sent her regard to you. Her name is Andika Rida Ayu Perdana. If you remember, yes, I he, remember. Yes. <laughs> she 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 just sitting next to me. She is my wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We met one in P2 EB for the yes. experimental studies, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, when we compile the data, uh, we use the AR books uh, and then what, who is the answer to the question and whether the head of household or uh, spouse of the household. So I think uh, CT start from this uh, uh, illustration to find uh, what is the education, the highest education level of, from the mothers and what is the highest education level from the fathers? I guess okay. from this one, but yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. got to Rita. Okay. <laughs> okay, that was the beauty of Irsa, right? We are big yes. fans here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any more questions or, or maybe something to discuss with Siti uh, and Bumade here? But we win. Maybe you want to. Okay, Masrus An, you just turn on your camera. Maybe you want to yeah. say something. Sorry, I I my point, but uh, I'm just curious why the observation is quite low in in this study. Um, sorry, mm -hmm. if I miss that important part. Yeah, thank you, Pak Ruslan. Uh, the first one we we used the IRS 2007 and uh, finding how many children who join the how to say this the test cognitive ability. So this is the, 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 as the baseline. And then from this data set, uh, we want to see uh, in their later life in 2014, uh, whether they stay uh, based on the data of cognitive ability, what is the educational attainment in the later life in 2014 and uh, do they continue studying? Uh, if not, do they will go to the labor market? And uh, how is the labor market outcome? So that's why uh, we focus on the sample available on year 2007 who uh, joined the test of the collective ability. And from this individual, we, uh, how to say, uh, take it back on 2014. That's why uh, we have a relatively small sample size. Okay, so <laughs> if that's the case, I might say, uh, suggest two points. Um, yeah. One is um, we need to um, caveat the selectivity nature by this um, yeah. participation. Yeah. So one of the way we um, transparently so how the selectivity happen is by uh, drawing the distributions yeah. uh, uh, either the uh, father or mother uh, uh, in the sense that whether in any attribute uh, that quite important like their education or level of income we have yeah. like sort of normally distributed pattern if not 
might be we we will expect uh, this uh, sample selectivity might drive the result um, in particular way. So mm -hmm. saying that the internal validity of the estimate might be limited to to this uh, uh, group of characteristic. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, that's the the pity thing about uh, uh, cognitive tests, which only cover not many individuals. Yeah. Thank really great uh, study. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much, Pak Rislan. We, we try to uh, re-estimate again, uh, focus on your suggestion. Thank you very much. Uh, that really improved our, uh, how to say, uh, research uh, procedure. Thank you. Okay, uh, Anding, maybe we run out of time, right? So, yeah. yes. Yes, sir. Okay, maybe uh, the, just the discussions from us Susan will be the last uh, discussions from, from us now, but at least, uh, although we're still discussing about, about the uh, justifying uh, the truth that we want to uh, gain from the discussion, but at least we shed some light that remittance have an, significant impact on the childhood development uh, research by Ma Astrid and then the early childhood educations uh, have an important impact on the uh, corruptions behavior uh, when they're entering the job market and then the last by Ma Amade and Siti uh, say that uh, educations, uh, parent educations uh, will improve the uh, cognitive ability for the students and thank you everybody for uh, joining uh, these sessions and then thank you very much for uh, once again congratulations and uh, thank you for Anggun and Mas Rusan, uh, Maastrid, Siti and also uh, Mamade and all of the participants, Mas Sidik for the contributions, Mbak Wiwin and other participants in these rooms and special thanks for Aning to assist us along the day I think because this is the last meeting for today. Uh, on behalf of Ilsa uh, and uh, the committee, uh, I will end uh, this meeting. Thank you very much once again and congratulations for all of us. Stay safe and see you. Thank you.